So in WWDC, Apple has announced that they're working on a game porting toolkit, which allows developers to port their existing Windows games over to Macs, which is amazing. So what I understand, it uses two translation layers. The first one is the Rosetta 2 translation layer, which converts x86 to ARM for Apple Silicon. And the second layer converts the DirectX 12 game to Apple's Metal API. It got me thinking, this could potentially have a huge positive impact on the PC gaming industry. And yes, I know, personally, I would not go out and buy a Mac solely for gaming, but it's great because if the existing Mac user has a capable Mac, there should be no reason why it can't run the games because Macs are quite capable of these days. So the setup process was actually swings and roundabouts, but quite straightforward at the same time. If you want to try this for yourself, I'll link Andrew's to size. I think that's how you say his names. I'll link his tutorial down in the description below. Also, it's worth mentioning that this is not its final form. In fact, this is not how you would officially run a game on a Mac in the future, given that this toolkit is essentially there to allow developer to assess their existing Windows game to see how well it performs on the Mac and optimize it and things like that. So after following Andrew's tutorial, when it comes to loading the exe files, it just wasn't opening for me properly via the command line and it was just a massive pain. That was until I discovered whiskey and no, not the alcoholic version. <laughs> so with whiskey, I was able to open pretty much any exe file and it just worked. I don't know how it works, but it just worked. So. I'll also link that in the description down below for you to check out as well. For context, I have the base model 2021 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. What a mouthful of words. And what I've discovered is not all games work. So if they have anti-cheats or they're heavily reliant on some game launcher, you may find some issues getting the game to load. Now, of course, I did test Cyberpunk and I was really surprised how well that run on the Mac, despite the two translation layers. In fact, it somewhat ran better than my RTX 3050 Ti gaming laptop, which was mind blowing. Whilst it may not be impressive on average, I got around 36 FPS on low settings and comparing apples to oranges, the RTX 3050 Ti gaming laptop actually did run the game at a higher FPS, but there were some instances of stuttering here and there, which I didn't find on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Now, I don't have a huge library of modern games, but here's a list of all the other games I've tested as well. Oh, and I would appreciate it if you thumbed up this video due to the sheer ball ache of trying to get everything to work and run into storage issues and things like that. Now, I've probably said it before, but keep in mind that this will definitely not reflect the actual performance in the future. So looking at the numbers and how things run so far, it definitely looks very promising for gaming on Macs in the future. Although I don't think it would be likely people will be going out and buying Macs purposely for gaming, and I'm not entirely sure if that's Apple's intentions. Although if it was, it would be very interesting to see in the long term how this would affect the PC market when it comes to gaming. But regardless, I think it's great Apple is actually finally starting to care about gaming and it gives us more options, which is great. And of course, if you have a Mac and you just want to play the odd game here and there, fantastic. In the meantime, if you're looking for a new gaming laptop, why not check out my previous video where I've created a guide on how to find your perfect gaming laptop. And if I don't see you there, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.